You've looked at the polygenic risk score for Hitler, for schizophrenia, ADHD and autism. And I, I wondered if you could take us through some of those. This was, again, another striking thing. And again, one of those those things that we absolutely have to put the guardrails in for is that he comes in the top 1% when compared to the Danish population for schizophrenia, autism and bipolar. With all the caveats involved, that it is not diagnostic. In fact, we for the paper, we do the calculation. And there is a 5% chance that he would have been diagnosed with any one of these disorders in his lifetime. So we have to be extremely careful, but again, it's striking. They've never seen anybody who is in the top 1% for all three of those disorders. You get one or two, but never three. So he's he is a genetic outlier. I know you've said that there's these caveats that it's not a diagnosis. And we have Simon Baron Cohen from Cambridge saying, almost as a slip of the tongue saying, we can't reduce, well, we, we don't want to reduce behavior to genetics, but he no. says, we can't reduce his behavior to these diagnoses. And then there's the psychiatrist Michael Fitzgerald, who just says people with ADHD like Hitler. And yet we've just said we don't know. And then again, people with these conditions are going to be stigmatized, aren't they? Well, that's a, the other thing that we've been trying to be clear about is that people with these conditions very rarely go on to commit violent acts, let alone genocide. They're more likely to be on the receiving end of these. There is this difficulty, and we're trying very hard to talk about how DNA is only a part of the picture.